Check out channelfireball.com to step up your game with videos and articles from the best in the world. You can use the code Gabby at checkout to help support this channel. YouTube and welcome. We are drafting some Kaldheim today and we're going to be taking Resplendent Angel or Resplendent Marshall. It, like, I don't think this card's like busted or anything, but it's still a three mana three three flyer. Like, that's just a good rate. It can make Mooser Box pick up the slack. Yeah, let me let me just try D like D disconnecting and reconnecting, Ryan. Oh man, that's funny. That's funny. It can be backbreaking sometimes. Yeah, if it works, it's pretty sweet. We can also try to play pick up berserkers. Like that's that's an easy type that we can make work with white. Um because you exile another card from the graveyard, you exile a berserker, then you put a plus one plus one counter on the berserkers you have in play. Like I think it works decently okay. There's nothing good in white here. There is a Colossal Plow, and then if we end up with a stupid cow, that's a pretty good combo. <laughs> um, alternatively, we can just take the Firewalker, which is a pretty good card. Perfect. Plowcast Marshall. It's true. I kind of want to take it and see if we can get the Ox. I think it's a really strong combo. It's probably better to take this Life Gain. Yeah, I don't know what just at life gain means yes I, I like i like ox combo it's strong one of the decks that i played uh, the, the deck the deck i ended up 6-3 with for in the arena open was uh had a ox combo deck in it master's gold can be pretty strong in these kinds of decks we have to you know pick up some artifacts or enchantments that work with it but like it could even get the plow back potentially sorry are you going for life gain strat no i'm not necessarily going for a life gain strat i am currently three two white cards in the plow ox combo feels like the only fringe archetype in the set it is it is we're kind of all in on this plow at this point um blizzard brawl is quite good just target you control and target you don't control if you control three or more snow permanents. The only problem is like it doesn't seem like this is gonna be a super snow heavy um deck. The other alternatives are taking Mistwalker, but like Blue White is not the best archetype. Could also take the Braggart or the Snow Covered Plains, potentially. Snow planes are pretty easy to wheel. Yeah, that's true too. I like the Mistwalker here too. I just don't really like the blue white flyers archetype too much. We'll see. We'll see. It, we might end up there. Like it might be fine for us to end up there. There's an Agar, and this card's really strong. And it's going really late. There's also an amulet, which actually lets us be a little more flexible, because I wouldn't mind playing this card. Kinda think I want to take the amulet. Makes me not have to pivot out of my colors. Isn't Greenwood pretty disappointing in this format too? Yeah, it's not the best. Another Colossal Plow. I, I feel like we should just take it and then just try to open as many oxes as we can. <laughs> I'm just in. I don't even care. Let's do it, baby. Nico defies destiny. I think this is actually okay, and it works with the Master Skull too. You gain two life for each foretold card you own in exile, which we don't have that many right now. Add blue, white, spend this mana only to cast foretell cards. Oh no, I thought this was the Raven's Warning. Yeah, that's not exactly what I wanted. Doomscar Oracle's okay. The Starheim Cornstar could be okay too. Nico is fine though. It's a very powerful card. Boo! <laughs> Corsair makes Plow cheaper. That's true. I'm actually going to take the Corsair, I think, over. We're not really the two spells, one turn deck. Oh, wow. Isn't this card good? Choose a creature type. Return up to two creature cards from the type from your graveyard to the battlefield if the spell was foretold. Return all creature cards. Yeah, that's for six mana. It foretells for seven. Damn. Um, I th think here we could either take Asgard Cavalry in case we don't end up being blue, or we can just take Snow Covered Plains in case it comes up that we need snow. Mm. The card destroyed you and sealed, but it seems it's good in draft. Agreed with that. Yeah, I think I'm taking the Snow Plains as well, Red. Yes, taking snow-covered planes, opening Berg Striders. That sounds like a pretty good combo. I like that the Mistwalkers are a combo with a Sprendon Marshall, by the way. That is a combo that works. Um, 
This also shares a type with all the other stuffs. Like, just think about it. This thing dies and we have like, uh, and, and then we have like a mist walker in the yard and we just like dies. It gives a plus one plus one counter to something else. That's not the worst. The only deck I can see playing, playing in it is UB. Oh, for the big uh, sorcery. Um, the frost dogger could be playable if we end up with a ton of snow. Hot sun cliff pings all shaped the, the shapeshifters to the yard. So, Brian Barrow Intruder is just kind of okay. And God's Hold Guardian, I think we can really easily get. So, I think I'd rather take the snow covered planes in case we open um, Berg Striders, because I think we would slam that. These are all really crappy. We're playing best of one, so we don't need this. I guess mists. They're all bad, though. Nah, we're not playing this. Oh, Kazima is not bad. Any Berg Striders? No, there's a Behold the Multiverse in this pack, which is pretty good. But Kazima's really good, too. It's a weird card. The beginning of your upkeep, you may exile Kazima if you do against whenever... I I've never actually played with it. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control of Kazima's exile, you may put a Voyage Counter on it. If you don't, return Kazima to the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters and draw X cards where X is the number of Voyage Counters on it. Is Kozima actually better than Behold? You want the artifact. What, the funeral longboat? I don't think you would take anything in this pack that isn't Kozima or Behold. I'm taking Kozima. Ascendant Spirit. I mean, we are picking up that snow stuff. It could maybe work. There's an Augury Raven, another Mist Walker. And the Ascendant Spirit, and we have two snow-covered planes to make this work at the moment. It's gonna be just a 2-3, mostly. You like Misty Dubs? I already have two mist mi Misty Dough. I think if that's the case, I just want, like, a Raven. Wheel Spirit? Yeah, I don't think I'm super excited about this one. Especially not with, like, the amount of planes I've got so far. Or snow, rather. Glacial Floodplain. A nice duel in our colors. Or battle shield warrior, or like a random dogger thought thief. I really don't want to take the dogger. I think glacial floodplain looks good in this deck. Spirit is secretly awful. Yeah, it just it requires a lot of um, you need to invest a lot in it for it to be like playable. Lord Seeker is also good, but I want the duel. Yeah, I think the duel looks pretty good there. Because now we're, we're, we're like in the market for some Berg Striders. Snow-covered island, icebind pillar, rune crown, or graven lore. We've got some options. We don't have any, um, we don't have any runes yet. God, the icebind pillar is so good. And we have three snow. I kind of want to take the icebind pillar, I think. Yeah, I love the pillar too. We've got three. This is not going to come back to us. Though. Oh, I never noticed. Look, there's a ship sinking like right in front of the world tree in this one. You think Pillar is better than Lord? Yeah, I'm leaning towards Pillar here as well. Any Bergs? Nah. Inga Runize is good. Could take another Augury Raven potentially. Inga's pretty decent. Let me look at this curve real quick. Hmm. This this is a two drop in theory. Inga is these. I like Raven more. I do like those Ravens. Those Ravens are good. They do good stuff. Yeah, I think I might just take the Raven. Let me move it back to. Oh man, got punished because there's a third Raven. Maybe we just have like a million Ravens. Yeah, it's going on the two drop spot. <laughs> I think I'm taking another raven. Yeah, I think so too, Louise. I think we are uwu flyers. Oh my god, there it is! We did it, fam! Amazing. We just need to get like another one, and then we're in really good shape. Dub dubs star no, sorry, where is it? Dubs colossal plow, dubs giant ox. Let's go, baby. Another Mist Walker. I think I can take a third one. Story Seeker could might be okay too. I know I like it too, Molly. It's like, 
Mer. Yeah, we have a lot of threes. It's hard to have too many Mistwalkers, to be honest. They're really nice with our, our Resplendent Marshall. Maybe I'll just take them Misty Dubs. Uh, another Master Scald. Are you good with any of our stuff yet? It's only good with our plows trading, basically. But, like, that's a real scenario. Yeah, I don't love the Yeti that much. I think the Yeti is kind of just okay. Another Misty Dibs. Uh, these are all kind of bad. I'll take a Story Seeker. Just a random two drop. Disdainful Stroke or Depart the Realm. I think I like Stroke a little bit better. I know, we're, we're just like an all Misty, Misty Walkers. Can I get a glimpse to Cosmos? The Cosmos is looking so beautiful with all these Misty Walkers in my deck. I don't think I'm playing the Undersea Invader in this deck. Just to Depart the Realm. I can actually put it out here for now. I really don't think we're playing this guy. Yeah, our bird count is really good. We just need to increase our ox count. That's what we're looking to increase. Dual land. Inga Runai's braggart augury raven. Oh, where's the berg striders? Where's the berg strider? Where are the ox? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I think we're just taking more Raven. What does this do again? Choose a creature you control until your next turn. All damage that will be dealt to creatures you control is dealt to that creature instead. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a flying counter on it. The creature is an angel warrior in addition to it. So it's like you turn something into a martyr or something. That's kind of cool. Well, we got a good card, but it's literally only one card for us here. The more yet is good, but not really doesn't really work with what we're drafting. Can we just get one more ox, please? This is pick three, pack three, pick two. We're about to see pick three. Ox, ox, ox. Berg Strider. Okay, so there's a Frostpire Arcanist. Can that get anything interesting? <laughs> Corgi Butts, afternoon. Welcome. How are you? Yes, we got there on the Berg. Irma Berg. All right, come on, Ox. This is pick four. We get we get four more chances at an Ox. Is someone out there taking all of our Oxen? What is going on? Our verdict seems okay, probably. Have we, we, we've only seen one Ox in the entire draft. We would have taken it at any point, I think. I know, Oxen free. This also works nicely in our deck because if we're just like sitting back with an ox, people have to attack us and then we can iron verdict once they attack. We have no removal. Yeah, we're more of a blue-eyed flyers tempo deck, so we might play the Depart the Realm so that we can have a little interaction. We're not playing the Frost Dogger at the moment, I don't think. Shimmer Drift Veil is really nice with our Pillar. I guess Pillar is kind of removal. Exile target artifact creature and champion opponent controls a player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Yes, we will not be doing that. Nucleo, it's really good to see you, dude. How are you? I think I want this. Raven form for you. I mean, the nice thing about Raven form in this deck is we have all these, um, oh, what are they? Mist walkers, which kind of blanks their 1 1, but I, I'd rather just have Shimmer Drift Veil given that we have the pillar. Pick six. We only have a few shots at the ox. No. Run ashore, probably. <laughs> yes, the bad thing about Raven Form is it is not very good. Let me put that probably. <gasps> yes! Oh, thank you! I was getting so nervous. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, we're set. We don't even care about what we will at this point. Inkoma, thank you so much for the 42 months. I really appreciate that. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Uh, I don't think I'm playing any of these cards, to be honest. I already have these two in my sideboard, so I'll take this for vault damage. <laughs> Do 
Do I have the Inga already? Oh no, I know. I passed on the Inga earlier, so now I can take the Inga again. We're attacking with flowers and sixers. Oh yeah, that's the plan. Disdainful stroke. Are there's a chance that the longbow is playable in this deck with our with our oxen and our master a double master scald. Since I don't think I'm playing double story seeker, I might just take this. Put it in the sideboard. Hawk enables your martial burp stuff. Oh, that's true too, actually. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, Raven form's not great, Louise. That story seeker there. We're gonna have to do a little deck buildy. Was carve any good there? I don't like the carve that much. I like this one a little bit better. The um, the funeral longboat, but I don't actually like either of them, so I doubt we're playing it. No, I'm trying to flip it. There you go. Uh, Red Hand, I don't know what Luis's take on it is. I'm sure, like, it's on his set reviews or something. But in my experience, Raven Form just, like, is a very mediocre removal spell that gives him, like, a pretty decent upside. So as if you're looking for a removal spell, like, that's just, like, not really where you want to be at. We don't need Double Story Seeker. I do think we want one to part. Mist is kind of terrible. Uh-huh. <laughs> These are all two drops. So this is 44 cards. It's an appealing card for sure. A lot of people like it, but I think it's a bad idea to play it. Yeah, I, I haven't liked playing with it that much, Luis. But I, I know some people have had different experiences with it. Obviously, like, your evaluation of the card changes also, like, in the situations you've gotten into, you know. Sometimes it's the only card that will kill the thing you need it to kill. Mainly only like Raven form if I'm getting value from Fortel and Sky, so Vega makes me interested in that. I can see that. That's the that's the burb, right? The um, tutu burb. I'm pretty sure that Luis has never actually told us his opinion in ra about Raven form. No, I'm pretty sure he has. I've certainly listened to his stream, and he's definitely bagged on Raven form on it before. Like, I am like 100% confident of that. <laughs> Stunlock, thank you so much for the 58 months. Holy moly, Stunlock, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if Depart the Realm is necessary either. If we take that out... My sarcasm detector might need a tune-up. Man, I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy, dude. I need, I need some cafecito. Raven Form is bad, but at least it's better than the Divine Gambit. Uh, which one's that one? I don't even remember that. Things are just going like... Whoosh. I don't think we need Story Seeker, to be honest. Like, we have all these things that we're going to be foretelling onto. I don't know if we need a Star Seeker on top of it. This is also foretellable onto. I don't know if we need Double Master Scald. Hmm. You don't understand why Divine Gambit is white and not red. Yeah, no idea. <gasps> I know! Slumar's winter has ended. I actually finally changed all the emotes. It only took 10,000 years. Gambit doesn't give them any extra cards, just extra mana, and later in the game, extra mana matters less. That is a right assessment. That sounds good to me. Um, Maybe we don't need Disdainful Stroke with this deck, and maybe we don't need a Master Scald. I could also see maybe cutting like a Mistwalker and Augury Raven, but this is this is definitely like a blue white flyers deck. I kind of like having those flyers. Chat, what would you cut for your last two cuts? Silvers, how was your weekend? Did you do anything fun? Did you get any, up to any action? Definitely cut at least one scald. Yeah, I think I might cut a scald. Oh, I do like having the repair reaches because of Angel. You're right. You picked up your PS5. Oh my god, my friend Jose just got his PS5 and he was sending me land plus scald. I can definitely see cutting scald. I'm not sure what the last one should be. I think it might be stroke. My friend Jose sent me a picture where he like put some other stuff in context to show how big this um, PS5 is. And it's obscene. It's like this big. Like, like this. I think I'm going to cut stroke. Yeah, I think it's stroke, Molly. 
Yeah, it's huge, right? Slubar's like, where do you put it? Do you just have to buy a new a new console? <laughs> new console that's big enough to house the PS5? So what games are on the PS5? I don't even know. It's as big as some wine bottles. Wait, what, what was the... What was the, the ranking size scroll? Like when they get... Like Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> Is it that big? <laughs> Demon Souls remake. That's cool. And Spider-Man. That also sounds cool. That too sounds cool. Ah, uh, this looks lovely. You would only get to play Demon Souls. You order Persona 5 Royal as the first game to play in the PS5. That's really cool. Snow covered plane into island, into ox, into island, into misty. Misty dubs. You're waiting on. Oh man, I've heard Horizon Zero Dawn is incredible. I just. That's just one of those games that, like. I didn't have a PS2 or a PS4 when that game was super popular, so it just kind of flew under the radar for me. Look at that. They put Valor the Worthy on this thing, but now I've got the ox just holding down the fort, baby. Yeah, I, I, I've heard it's awesome. It seems like they have snakeskin, Molly, because they, they had something for one green man and they don't have anything suspended, so that it's gotta be. I don't know what else it could possibly be. This is fine, though. We get to play Mistwalker, and then next turn we get to play Mistwalker plus Taplin naming white so we can play Resplendent Marshall. No attacks. And if they, like, fight my... Oh, God. Oh, baby. That is cool. I still think we're supposed to play Mistwalker into Shimmer Drift Veil. Name white. Cool, cool. No attacks. So, Dreamy, I can show you the Spendin' Marshall. So... When it... Oh, shoot. I'm, like, right on top of it. Actually, I'm on the wrong overlay for starters. It should be this one. Um, I can hover right over here. They didn't attack with a 5-4, but they, but I think they have Snakeskin Veil, which is... weird. Yeah, 5-4 is, is in thickened. I could just play my island and then play Resplendent Marshall. We're not going to get any value off of the Marshall right now. Oh, I think it's maybe because they want to try to ambush... My Mistwalkers, maybe? I don't think we're going to get any value here, but I think it's fine. I streamed a little bit of Dark Souls feeling. I don't think the game's for me. Yeah, I take it back. I know that game's not for me. I played Hollow Knight, which has similar vibes, but... Oh, they're looking to destroy my plow, maybe? I do need another creature in the yard before I can get it back with the Master Scald. Yeah, the Monkey Island is 2 stream was really fun. I do want to play the, the Witness Slew. I do want to... We just have to keep in mind that they have snakeskin for sure. I don't know what else that could have that stop could have possibly been. Yeah, squirrel, I love playing Hollow Knight. I I want Silk Song to come out so badly. That whole stream, like that whole stream game was like pretty fun. Hmm.
No, I didn't play any Hades, YY. I think I would like that game a lot, but... Are they gonna attack? No, they didn't. I think I would like that game a lot, but I just... Basically, like, the week that it was out in full force, Luis's brothers came to visit, and uh, they were playing a lot of it, and so I just spent a lot, a lot of time watching them play it instead of... Uh, yeah, we're gonna plow some fools, Molly. Instead of playing it myself. So I'm not sending with the mist walkers. But I can start sending with the colossal plow. Then when it dies, I can just get it back. Upcoming cool new games. Among Us new map, new Pokemon Snap, Resident Evil 8. I'll probably watch some people play Resident Evil 8. Um... Yeah, that sounds fine. Uh, yeah, so let's go to end of combat. Next to main, sure. So now we can get Flow plus exile the other thing. Nice, nice. Play the plow, play the floodplain. Love it. They still have snakeskin veil. Snakeskin veil wouldn't have done anything on that attack at any point. Hey Gabs, just had a great day of training for your new job. Marky, how's it going? That's super cool. Is a new jobbers going well? Monster Hunter Rises out this month. That's exciting. Oh my god, squirrel, stop. You're out of control. Because reach in is every creature type. So... Uh... It's good, Gay Black Geek. It is a good. Yeah, I think we're just gonna play this. I don't even know if I really want to attack. Nah. I need some Behold the Multiverses or something. The problem is that attacking here just like trades with a Doomstar Oracle and like, then what? It's just... Yeah, ABH. I'm not attacking here, I don't think. Getting another Master Scald on top would be sweet, but I don't actually have any... Like, I need something to... Exile, I would want to do that. Ooh. Hold on, what does the vehicle do? I've never read that side. Whenever a vehicle you control deals combat damage to a player, the player exiles that many cards from the top of their library, you may play the lands. Okay, that's never gonna happen. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, have, I don't do a lot of oatmeal cookies, feline. I do not have the recipes you look for. So I'm gonna let her exile first, I guess. Yeah, Molly, I kind of agree with that. <laughs> oh my god, Louise. <laughs> I heard you reached out to one of my magic box breakers this past week, but I was already getting from CFF box breakers too. Uh, I don't really know what you mean, a zombie thing. We've definitely been doing a bunch of stuff with like, um, box breaks folks, but not really sure what specifically you're talking about. Are they gonna hit? Okay, so we do want to exile. Another Mistwalker. So now if... Whenever a land enters the battlefield, you control. If Kazuma was actually you may put a witch counter on it. If you don't... 
Yeah, so now we have to play a land. So it needs to get at least a voyage counter on it, basically. Probably want to wait to next turn and see what we do. Uh, yes, I would like to take the action. Does it have the counter now? Okay, yeah, it has a voyage counter on it. Cool. Yeah, Kayo, I, I'm kind of liking... i kind of thinking that Behold the Multiverse would have just been better here. <laughs> <laughs> so the next turn we may put another counter. And then we... It feels like it's so slow. Okay, Inga's good. I'm just gonna bottom all lands because I don't actually even want the Starheim Corsair. It's not worth. I think I scrap them to the bottom, Molly, because I'm just naturally more likely to draw lands. So if now if I draw spells, I'm happy, and if I draw a land, then I can just do the Kasima thing. It's really awkward. I agree. Oh, that's cool, Zombie King. Yeah, we've been doing uh, we've been doing a bunch of promotions with Pokemon Magic influencers on the box break side. Um, they actually just started today. They're running through Saturday for Shining Fates. Okay. So I have 22 cards, they have 23. Yeah, this does play the snakeskin. Or we might be able to blow them out, Molly. Like, we might be able to line up a block where they want to use snakeskin to save something. What does this do? Yeah, they're going ham. This is five damage. <laughs> this is not tapped. Or that thing, does this thing give vigilance? It does give vigilance, that's funny. Hey, Mama Kipster, thank you. I appreciate that. What is our plan for the Stalwart Valkyrie? I think it's a take seven. Hmm. Berg Strider can tap the Valkyrie, but it doesn't like really do that much in the long term. Hi, Nikolai. It's really good to see you. How are you? Nah, this is just not great. Maybe this will bite the, the, the snakeskin. Yeah, that's true, Molly. Try to tap the Valkyrie. Yeah, I want the snakeskin gone, too. I was not gonna make it go away, though. That's a shame. What can we draw to deal with that thing? We put it at the bottom, but I think... Um... Oh, no, we don't have the bounce spell, actually. If I draw another Master Scald... Oh, no, but I don't have some way to get it back. Hey, Daco! I know! I, I was told today that the Discord notification's not working. I'm gonna have to disconnect it and reconnect it, and hopefully that fixes things. They so we have, they have Foretell card plus a snake skin. I mean, that was not a bad draw, actually. You're thinking attack into Bergstrider into Iron Verdict, hoping they block with Valk. So the problem, Waddle Dee, is that the the Elder Leaf Mental also has um, Reach. Is the problem with that that plan? Otherwise, I would have considered it. 
They also have the snake skin, and th that also messes up with that plan. There's like a bunch of reasons why we, we, we don't have attacks right now, unfortunately. Mostly that stupid arachnid. Oh, yeah. Oh, dang. They have elf rogue right now. Yeah. I'm not worried about the elder leaf mentor because I have the plow. I feel like we can just line up some kind of crappy blocks on that. But the stalwart Valkyrie is kind of a problem. I am probably gonna do a super big block here. If they attack with it. No attacks. Alright, so... Do we bring back Kazima here or do we just keep her exiled for one more turn? She'll come back with one counter and draw one card. Kazima's been so slow, Molly. You're right. I think we have to go for more as well. I'm going to put Voyage counter on it. Yeah, the 3-5 doesn't do anything on this board, and I just need to draw some cards. So they still have this foretold card, Snakeskin, plus something else. Okay, the, the thing they drew was just a land for this turn. Holy moly. Okay. This says, whenever a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls. Okay, so they, their snake skin doesn't trigger that. Well, they have better cards than we do. Uh, two cards plus the three, five back. Let me see what we can potentially draw. Uh, drawing Icebind Pillar at this point would be pretty darn good. Oh yeah, and a four, six, you're right. Oh, Ice Spine triggers Mammoth every turn. You're right. Holy moly. Okay, then I am gonna just put a Voyage counter. Uh, nah, I didn't. I didn't actually turn it on today, Doko. Thanks for reminding me. I can do that. I don't think Ice Binding them and making them draw gets me anywhere. Yeah, no worries, Doko. Let me see if they need an update. No, it's actually good. Good to go. Put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature twice and exile a creature with the greatest power among creatures your opponents control. Damn it. We might have we might have to, if we draw the pillar, tap the mammoth and iron verdict it, and then start tapping the Valkyrie. Like, we might just not have an option, you know? Thank God. Um, I think we can keep Augur Raven. Have we given up on beating a snakeskin then? I, I, I mean, I don't think we've been in a position to, like, fight it, Molly. I... The problem is, yeah, you're right. If they have the snake skin, they'll always protect the stupid mammoth, so... I'm not normally on Twitch that I didn't realize how CBL work, and I was just amazed. Yeah, it's really cool, Waddle Dee. I'm gonna keep the Augury Raven on top, because I think having more flyers against that thing is, like, pretty decent. I'm just gonna play another Augury Raven. What is the last chapter on this? Exile the greatest creature. So it's gonna be the Berg. Sure. So can blow the game is saved. We're so dead, Molly. My opponent's cards are really good. They have this 8-7 flyer and the stupid 6-5 mammoth, which is making my life a living hell. 17 cards, I'm at 15. Or you plow if you animate it with a trigger on the stack. Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, they are! Look, they're trying to kill my augury raven. Alright, we're gonna have to... Damn. 
Okay, yeah, they're putting that on the Valkyrie again. <sighs> Are they actually going to hit with it? Nope. I don't know how this game's gonna end, chat. I do know that we're gonna try to juke them here in a second. Are they gonna put it on my other Augury Raven so they can kill it? Please tell me they're gonna do that. That would be so incredible. I think they're targeting my Augury Raven. Please. Okay, now they're putting that one there. <laughs> Debated. All right, regardless of what happens this game, that that was pretty cool. <laughs> We're going to have to do that again next turn cuz I don't think we can let the uh, the raven die. Sixteen cards, fourteen cards. Oh boy. That is certainly a card. They still have the snake skin. We can't really use this very well. Maybe decking them with Pillar Mammoth? 16 to 13? Maybe that's the play. You did deck someone with Pillar Mammoth yesterday? I think that might be like what we end up having to do here. We're not really in a good spot otherwise. I am going to have to make the move. I'll do it on their turn. I'll tap it on their turn. Uh, of um, activating the Colossal Plow again with the Ox. Because I don't want my Raven to die. It's like my Raven's pretty importante. Plus, we have uh, the, another Master Scald. Oh no, we cut out the second Master Scald. I can attack every second turn in the air, right? But they hit me back with Valkyrie, and that's really bad for me. Oh, it also exiles them? Remind then. Because, Finn, they have the Valkyrie, and this thing has the Arachnoform over here in the corner. So, Oh, and they even have the Resplendent Marshal. So no, I don't, I don't have attacks. I think this might be a decking them sort of game. I will say Mammoth is a May ability, so it seems like not super likely that I'm going to duck them. <laughs> mill plan never goes wrong. We don't actually have like a good plan to kill them, so I think mill plan might be our best shot, to be honest. At some point when we can get Kazima back, we'll draw three cards. Yes, Kazuma learned a lot in the voyage, but none of it was useful, unfortunately. Benjamin, thank you so much for the 15 months. I appreciate that. They foretold a little something something. Alright, Kazuma's coming back. Decline. Wow, it was all garbage. Down to 8 cards, they're at 12. Could we try to line up a giant attack if we were to tap? No, we really can't. <laughs> yes, was it all garbage? Always has been. I'm at 8, they're at 10. 
Yeah, we it's gonna be a decking them or nothing sort of game. They even have these oracles. I have two of them. They're gonna double spell right now, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah, we can't. We absolutely can't kill them. This is gonna have to be a deck them sort of game. And I don't even think we can actually do that. They can stop drawing cards with mammoth if they want. <laughs> Red Arrogant Knight. I don't... Like, I don't even know if we're supposed to send Cosima on the voyage again. We can't draw more cards. We need them to deck. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. Okay. Does that actually, like, do much? I don't think it does. Decline. Where are they at? They're at 9, and I'm at 7. And they just drew. I'm just hoping that they won't notice. Like, we just don't really have another option. What's We can't kill them with damage. Decline. <laughs> Awful. That's 6. This is really sad, Molly. Maybe we shouldn't have triggered the Kazima. Maybe we just shouldn't have drawn. They drew with it. <laughs> Molly. <laughs> That'd be pretty brutal. Six and six, by the way. So at this point, they should not draw again, but if they do draw again, maybe we're in it. Surreal Sea Dragon, thank you for the 28. Flying First Strike Raptaro, sure. Is there anything left in our deck? Anything of value? Ooh, Master Scald. What does Streamlets not have access to emotes anymore? Um, The thing kind of like chokes on itself every once in a while and stops working. Decline. Yeah, but I think Behold would have just been better um, in, like, when we drew it, Tilt City. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here, but I think they should stop drawing. Yeah, they knew to do that. That's unfortunate. Is there any way we can bait them into drawing another card? Or are we just on a slow path to death with four cards left in our deck? We could try to move where... Return target permanent with Converna cost or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Mm, I don't think it's gonna... I don't think it's gonna matter, Realman. Oh. That might, uh... That might do a little something something. Maybe, maybe we can try, this is a sequence that's very unlikely to work, but we can try it anyway. We could tap the Mammoth and then use Iron Verdict on it. And there's a chance that by triggering it twice, they might like draw a card. <laughs> that's like our only hope, I think. It's really stupid.
sure. They're up 41 life, my god. Where are they gonna fly? Mmm, sure. Oh, Jeebus, we are super, supremely dead. Oh, do I know the last... My last three? Okay, here's my... Here's the play, okay? We're gonna concede after this. I'm hoping that they draw here. Or that they might use their snakeskin build to protect it. Nah, they just let it go. Oh my god, that's right, it's Jeebus' birthday! Happy, happy birthday from all of us to you! Hey Jeebus! How's your birthday going? I forgot for a sec, that's really cool. Yeah, birthday, birthday, birthday from all of us to you! Hey Dr. BB Math, we are Omega dying. We don't stand a chance. It's time to concede. Good, you got a cake from a bakery. What kind? But what kind, though? Oh, Magnet. So, it was just a ridiculous board state where, like, neither of us could attack. But we ducked first. German chocolate. That sounds delightful. Weird first game. Yeah, no creatures attacked that game, not really. We traded off a plow at one point, and that was, like, one of the only creatures that ever attacked that game. Yeah, so what happened is that they had the mammoth. Maybe we were supposed to never bring it back with Kazima. Maybe we should have figured out that, like, the only way we could win was decking them. So the Kazima would put us too far down our own, like, drawing path, basically. Oh, Cap. People are just, like, on on their bullshit again. <laughs> GME is going back to the moon, baby. Except I am not, not partaking in this one. I don't... Honestly, Cap, it's really weird because I've gone to the subreddit a bunch. Like, after, like, GME definitely did not pan out. And the re subreddit was so sad. It was, like, so... Half the people were, like, convinced that the squeeze was still gonna happen, which it hasn't. Uh... Oh, Deep Fucking Value did the double down. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I can get behind that. So let me go island into Ox because the next turn we can go planes into Mistwalker into Mistwalker Shimmer Drift Vale. It opened up 45 and it's currently. I heard that Deep Fucking Value got sued. W wasn't he appearing in like federal court or something? Gabby, wow, Let's Gabby, celebrate wow, Jesus' Gabby, birthday with wow, some Zoe's wow, so not wow. wearing party hats! I'm so excited, Jeebus. That's so cool. You guys can get some Fuel's birthday man for Jeebus? Fuel's birthday man. Uh, oh, Squirrel, I was setting up the stream when I got your link. I, I still have to check it out. Happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. He's in congressional hearings. Yeah, I thought he got sued or something. I, I, I didn't follow it super closely. He's being sued, yes, and he appeared before Congress for testifying. No! So the good news about the Demon Bolt is that now I have a Mistwalker in the yard, and if I get the Resplendent Angel and some more Mistwalkers out there, we're gonna profit. Yeah, that's not surprising, uh, poor collector and tactical therapist. That's gas. I like that he's getting sued and he's like, I don't care. I'm just still gonna keep doing my thing. Um, interesting. We should probably... We'll play Kazima. We'll worry about Kazima later. I actually think it's better to play them as Walker. I'm gonna get blue here, I think. All right, so we have blocks there and blocks there. He also snuck in the not a cat line, which- Did he really? That's incredible. I'm here, judge. I'm not a cat. 
I mean, if they have something, they can use it if they want. <laughs> no soy un gato. Sure. I had a frostbite. Um, funnily enough, it actually makes more sense to play Giant's Amulet here. And I do have enough blue. Cool. Because then, otherwise, if I played the Mistwalker, the Gold Knot Champion just attacks and taps my Mistwalker and then the Valkyrie gets in. But now if I, if I play my Mistwalker, like next turn if I draw land, I can go like Mistwalker Kazima or something. Um, and then Gold Knot Champion can't attack into the Giant's Amulet. <laughs> Is the Ox Giant or are we small? Let's see. I wish they put something in context so you could see the, just, just how ginormous this Oxyx. Ew, Axe Guard Bragarino. Bird Striders looks a little bit better here. Stepping the Valkyrie. Oh, this is the mountain next to the ox. If you clearly see the mountain next to it, you can see how much bigger the ox is than the mountain. <laughs> if you play Omen Kill, you can use it to crew Omen Kill in defense to respond to Gold Paws tap effect. I don't know. I don't know which one Omen Kill is. All right, they suspended a bunch of nonsense. Cool. cool. Oh. Hi, Synth! I saw you were playing Zero Escape Game. Uh, or Zero Time Escape, I think it's called. The second one. I forget what it's called. Did you see that we have the Spider-Man 3 title now? I did not know that. That's pretty cool. Let me play Inga. Ooh, Resplendent Marshall's really good. So is Augury Raven. I think we can bottom the land, though. Because next turn we can play Resplendent uh, Angel and Augury Raven. Oh, but we won't draw them at the same time. It's a little awkward. If that's the case, I should actually draw Augury Raven. So I can go Mistwalker, or suspend Augury Raven, then play Resplendent Marshall. Oh, wait a second. I don't have a Mistwalker out. Mistwalker can be any, and this Mistwalker here can be any for the Respondent Marshal. So we could choose Giant and get... Oh, hold on. We can choose Wizard. Yeah, I, I always call it to spend, Chris. Like, if we choose Wizard for the Resplendent Angel, that's going to be cool. Hi, Slam Dunk! Welcome! Yeah, it does mean that we take a hit from the Valkyrie, but that's fine. Right, so next turn we'll play Mistwalker plus this. We'll have a block there, and then Resplendent Angel naming Wizard will hit four things. Oh, dang. Oh, it just gives it to anything that shares a creature type? I see. Interesting. That's cool. That Then that still works the way we want it to, though. That's very sweet. Um, No attacks. So they're probably going to do a big attack next turn is my guess. They're thinking. 
Jeez. So they can pump everything plus one, plus one. Tapping Berg. They only have enough one to do the, like, mass pump. So... We can put... This here to trade. Actually... This here to trade. This here to just e soak some damage. And then... This feels like plus two, plus one. Well, we have an onboard an onboard trick, Corgi. They have the plus one, plus one to everything with Boast, so... That still would be fine. This here still would be fine. And then... Uh, that would be okay here if it goes to 4-4. Four, four. If it's plus 2, plus 1, we would trade. Oh, hold on. No. There. Like that. 4-5 giant on the 2-3 topper, I think. Yeah, I like this. I think I like this block. This doesn't blow us out if it's the plus 2, plus 1. And if it's just that plus 1, plus 1, I think we're in fine shape. We're, we're, about, we're about to see. I guess we'll see what their actual thing is. Sure. Do they have anything left? I This attack did not seem super good for them. Oh, they just didn't want to... They just didn't want to lose it, I guess. That attack did not seem great for them. Yeah, I did not like it. I did not like it, slew. So... Let me see, we can play Augury Raven. No, we're gonna have to play Augury Raven Resplendent Marshall. And Exile. Just a Mistwalker. Nice. We have good attacks in the skies, too, coming up. How much is this to equip? Two. Rune of Sustenance on the Bragarino. Okay. That gives it what? Lifelink. Should put another Marshal on the set that's less resplendent <laughs> to match the real Marshal lore. Um, let's get this plow going because I really want to trade it off so that we can use the Master Skull to get it back. I think that would be lovely. We could also slow roll this island so that we can use it to Kusima to exile. Since we're at 20. Might not even be worth it. Might be better to just get more lands going. So we have to wait to play next turn. And we're probably gonna play Master Skull next turn. One, two, three, four, five, plus equip the giant amulet. Oh, is that the place you stopped by to prep for the open slew bars? Cause it looked super good. I think Resplendent Angel can attack. Just because if, if it dies, there's another Miss Walker in the yard. <laughs> Hi, Ark! Welcome! Oh, yeah, Ben is probably interested in this now. It's called Mount Bagel. 
Hey, CV Yard, I guess it's not too bad. I, I am regretting peeking Kazima over just Behold the Multiverse. It hasn't been as good. Like, in almost any situation we've drawn it. But that is life. I like it, Ben. When are you moving? Okay, we get to do some... Some blocks here. Mm. Oh, we can actually put this on... We can actually put that on this raven. And then still have enough for Master Scald. Oh, that's so cute, Ark! Remember GPs? Oh no. My Colossal Plow is getting provoked. Okay, well... It's not that big a deal. That means that you and you and you can attack. Yeah, I like that. And then play land and master scald. And get back plow and exile Inga. Oh, that's still a ways away, Ben. That's super cool, though. Hey, BS Parin! You made a Dino Tibble Trickery deck. It has around 5% win percentage, but it's really cute when it actually works. How does it work, BS? That sounds really sweet. That is also a lot of months. Thank you so much, BS Parin. I really appreciate it. Oh, shit. Your opponents can't gain life. At the beginning of your upkeep, Quakebringer deals two damage to each opponent. Their ability triggers only if Quakebringer... Is on the battlefield or if Quakebringer is in your graveyard and you control a giant. That's a lot of times it triggers. They don't have a... This is Dwarf, Dwarf, Angel. Deals two damage to each opponent. Holy moly. And I can't even gain life? Okay, we, be we best get to it. We gotta kill him. Yeah, it's time to jam. I wish there's a way this thing had first strike so we could get the counters before. Um, hold on, let me see. We are, so we're getting in for seven, eight, nine, and then I want to play Kazima too. I need three for that, so I can do one pump on you and still be Gucci. Okay. Sure. Counters on everyone. I guess it would have been better. I guess I didn't know they were going to block the 3-3, three, three, so it didn't necessarily make sense to play Kazuma pre-combat, but whatever. We are here now. We're probably not exiling Kazuma at all. So I go to 8. Oh, I could have crewed the plow for a counter. No, I didn't actually want that because I want the plow back for blocks here. That is something you can do. That's really cute. But I actually want it here. Past two blocks. You trade there. You eat that. You eat there. My opponent's dead. Love it. Yeah, I think that was just a very desperate attack because they were dead in the skies next turn to all our flyers. Yo, the resplendent angel was so or the resplendent marshal was so good in that match. It works really well with Mistwalker, that's cute. We did it, Ark. Yeah, it was cool, Kyle. <gasps> Doom Scar. Spooky spooky. That card is cool. Do 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 do. Yeah, it really is poured. There's a wombo combo. <laughs> this thing looks good. 
What is a doom scar? I don't know. I like how it's spelled though, Ryan. It's good shit. I like that card. <laughs> My deck is super hot for Sudcliffe. Yeah, we were initially gonna make it a Berserkers thing, and then we got past a Mistwalker like pack one, pick three or something. And then we got it past another one in the next pack. And I was like, okay, let's just go for Miss Walkers. At the time, I didn't even realize that Miss Walker would just trigger all of them if you exile. So we have four. Here, let me show you. Look at that, baby. Incredible stuff. <gasps> the plow! And then we just need the ox. I mean, I'm actually just going to suspend the raven here. Because uh, the plow's not going to do anything. Went to a little tournament between friends and my husband won. Oh, that's so cool. I love it, Feline. That's awesome. Was it this weekend? Oh, and I ran bitch with a 48. Thank you, friend. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Um, Can we make two plays this turn? Nah, let's play Augury Raven. Plus this. Next turn we can... Foretell the Raven plus play the Plow, maybe? Or play Inga? I think I like Foretell Raven plus Plow. <gasps> Destiny! How are you, Destiny? How's your weekend? Ooh, spooky, spooky glittering frost. Plus Foretell. Double Plow! We're popping off, baby. Foretell that, plus play Plow. Now we might want to Inga because now we need the Ox. Oh, that sounds really yummy. What did you get? That's Thai Destiny. I love Thai, so I'm like... Ship me the details. That's cool, Feline. Did you pull the Vorinclex, like... The, the Vorinclex from the set, or the Vorinclex from the list? Because I've pulled the Vorinclex from the list, and I was like, Wow, I wanted a Vorinclex, but I got the wrong one. <laughs> it's still really cool, though. That one gets played in EDH, I think. Oh, that's spooky. What's their snow situation? One snow... And this is a snow land. One, two, snow, two snow, red snow, blue snow. Mm. Hmm... Yeah, I think it's just time for Amulet plus pump up the jam. They currently can't, um... God, Eyesight Troll's really good against their Colossal Plow. They currently can't, uh, double activate. Okay, they've got their own crow. It is holding back my pl my plow though. Oh no. Hmm. I'm gonna have to exile this next turn. No point in attacking. I think I'm gonna hold on to that planes for Kazima. They had like four of the art cards that were like... Oh yeah, the, the art cards are super cool feeling. Those are the ones that come in the set boosters, right? I think those are super awesome. I have one here, I think. No. No, I, I don't have it anymore. Oh, spooky. They only have two snowlands though. One of them has a glittering frost. They probably are not in the market for activating that. You do it or no? I do want to take action. Okay, so now we can planes and just do voyage counter. So voyage counter. Inga, let's see if we find the Ugh, Ox isn't even really good here. 
Master Scald, another Mistwalker. Mistwalker's okay. Master Scald's not. And Land isn't either. Because, like, as long as they have the Ice Hide Troll, we can't really attack with a Plow. So I think we just keep the Mistwalker and keep going. Play Colossal Plow, number two. That's funny, feline. <laughs> oh, six foot. That would be cool. It's like using like the full art uh, crypto command or something. Psycho. Oh, shit. Flash flying horse. Foretelling cards from her hand costs less. Okay. I'm glad I kept the mist walker. That's what you're doing when you pull them. I see, I see. Ooh, Jalita's back. Hey, girl. I'm gonna say hi. Hi. She doesn't want to say hi. She just wants to crawl. Just sit at the base of my foot. Julita. Mm hmm Mmm. So what is the pump spell? It's plus four plus four, right? Plus four plus four, yeah. So I guess if this is the pump spell, this is like pretty bad trade. I guess we were gonna run into the pretty bad trade no matter what. I guess I'm okay just... Oh, that's that's right. They just foretold it. You're right, Shaza. You're right about that. I think I'm fine just trading a, a bird there for this. Okay. Double block is good versus the snake and bad versus plus four. Oh, so maybe I should have double blocked because they might have had snake skin, but they couldn't have had the plus four because they just foretold it. Um, okay, I'm gonna choose one more voyage counter on Kazima before coming back. Oh, yeah, that's right. They don't have any cards in hand. They just have the foretold card. So, it didn't matter. You're right. It did not matter. I mean, we're kind of both top decking at this point, but I do have Kozima that's going to draw me two cards. It's going to be a big creature on the board, too. Oh my god, Ryan. <laughs> play a village, draw a village, play the village. Play the village, draw the village. The Ox wouldn't even be that good, Chris, because they have that stupid Ice Hide Troll. We need, we need to figure out an answer to the Ice Hide Troll. The Berg Strider would be kind of nice for a little bit. It would open up a lot of attacks. Right now it's just Ice Hide Troll versus the world, like, basically. Another Misty Dubs. How are the Uwe Flyers? They're good. Luis is a really slow deck. Every game has just been like, play a bunch of creatures and no one can attack anyone. I think it's because I just have so many Mistwalkers in this deck, you know? Um, okay, now it's time for her to come back. No, Shaza, you don't need to keep lands though. You're just gonna naturally draw lands. See? Mm. I think we can start attacking with the mist walkers. Like if they just block that there and then this here, we can actually make a trade happen, which starts looking a little bit better for us. Sure. Like, I think we're happy with this trade. And then we can also activate this a little bit more. Mm. 
That was a pillow fight. That was a trade. And then we got in for three points of damage. It wasn't too bad, right? Next next turn, we can attack with Augury Raven and Mistwalker again. They have to block the Augury Raven. And then this can get in for four. Ms. Walker reminds you of the Ka. Oh my god, they do! Kaka, you don't belong here! You're totally right. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Maybe I could have activated a plow there. Doesn't seem necessary. Mistwalker, he'll get get up in the Mistwalker. Mistwalker, you don't belong here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's these birds. Birds from Slay the Spire. It's these burbs. These guys, look. The caca, you don't belong here. Yeah, look at what they look like. Ah, this guy's flexing and they're so confused. You don't belong here. What are they doing? Okay. What's the plan? Oh, I actually have a Jorb's, like, BTTV emote over here. I think Podge. Yeah, look at that. No! Can't stop that from happening either. Hmm. think it's time to... Oh uh, man, we can't really attack past this Mistwalker anymore. We could move the giant's amulet to the Mistwalker. They're not really in a position to be attacking, though. I don't even really care if they attack me with Ice Hide Troll, you know? Because that just means I have better attacks. We needed to draw better off this Kazima. We just drew two, three lands, basically. Dog or Thought Thief? Are they going to do themselves yet? They bottomed the Horizon Seeker. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it does that much on this board. Wow, still bricks. I mean... I could turn this into a 5-1 and trade with a Mistwalker and then the 1-1 one, one bird can start attacking. Is that even worth it? Crossfire was great, it was random, chaos with no... <laughs> I know, we're, we're getting kind of forsaken here. We need to draw something. Bergstrider would be such a good draw. I don't actually like trading off my Mistwalker. Just a clean, nice 11 turn clock. <laughs> Bergstrider! Oh my god. I just feel like if we draw Bergstrider or Resplendent... Or resplendent Marshall, we will have regretted trading off the Mistwalker. Did I get a refreshment for Starbucks? This is a uh, black tea lemonade. Sure. That was an excellent draw. That was another draw I wasn't even thinking of.
They have something, by the way. It could just be the eyesight troll activation. Okay, we've got a two turn clock. Oh, they also have Avalanche Collier, right? Yeah, yeah. And I guess Miss Walker, too. We, we can't read anything. They have a million activations. We have some good draws. Behold the multiverse would be sweet. Any of the ravens would be okay. Yeah, they're dead. You always fear the avalanche callers. The problem is that they were they were just behind the majority of the game. And they didn't have that many snowlands, and they needed some of those to keep around for um their eyesight troll. Which was basically holding back our plows. So they weren't really in a position to be sending with the lands. We even had the stupid uh, four or five giant for a while. I mean, eventually it just became uh, equipment for the Mist Walker. They did. They did, Molly. That was not bad. Not bad. Mm, I like it. Keep it. It's funny. Resplendent Angel is kind of... Or Resplendent Marshal is kind of not one of the cards that you want to see immediately because this deck needs a little bit of setup time for it so next up is going to be augury raven and then play raven mm. Portel. Plus, they're planning on doing that thing. We might want to um, Iron Verdict the Frost Dogger when they go for the taps here. Because this card's pretty good. It's going to draw them a bunch of stuff. Then next turn we can play Augury Raven plus Fortel and Augury Raven. Alternatively, we could just... Foretell Augury Raven, then play double Augury Raven. Yeah, that's true. Maybe it's better to just foretell these two. Although if I just play Augury Raven now, I can start attacking. Maybe it's just better to do that. <laughs> then next turn I can go foretell Augury Raven and Iron Verdict. They bricked. Yeah, so we'll foretell these two fools. And maybe set up for this Ermaberg Strider when we draw land. Or just play the second raven. Yeah, the problem is if we just foretell the second raven to then play two ravens is we missed out on what attack by the raven. And it was the same because it cost two mana no matter which turn you did it. So, Like if I didn't have another foretell card I wouldn't like this play because we wouldn't have another thing to foretell. But we do. Yeah, I think I like having this uh, Iron Verdict ready to go whenever we need it. Frost Dogger is one of those cards that should be amazing. Yeah, I th I, my, my guess is that too many decks play it without actually being able to hit on it, Arc. Oh, I see what you mean, Arp. I, I like getting this one set up ready to go. I can see playing the second Raven too, though, yeah. Time Twister, that's a sick burn! <laughs> Holy shit! I think I'm just gonna play a bunch of flyers and then play Berg Strider next turn. Or I could just play the Kin Seekers, but I'm not gonna get the pump. It's fine. I'll play the Marshall. We're not gonna get any value from it. But I wanna get the counter off of this thing. 
And I think it's better to go Kinseekers into Berg. Hmm. Oh man, maybe we should have just attacked with the Augury Raven first, because if they just decided to fire it off on the Raven, I would have been able to play second Raven and exile Raven to Marshall to put a counter on it. Sure. So they're down at one foretold card? Okay. This is actually going to be okay, though, because this Kin Seeker is going to get the pump because we have double Raven, so I don't think it's that big a deal. Sure. Oh, yeah, that's Scrying Sheets. I, rem I remember. I remember that card. Let me do this now. Nah, we don't want land. Nice, nice. We can play this. Probably name white with this one. Sure. Meadow, it's way better to play the Kin Seekers right now. You get the pump, and then you can use the Berg Strider to tap anything big that they play. They they don't have good blocks against the King Seekers either. They're just on mono draw every single card. Also, at some point here, we we might be able to go like Berg Strider tap the Pack Mate, just verdict it to kill it, something like that, depending on what they play. Yeah, that's that's that that's exactly what I said, Luis. Oh, I see, Madoy. I see, I see. Yeah, the like unblockable one, the Yeti. The Yeti's kind of fiercer. Mm. Yeah, they can't really do anything about this attack. Then we can play double Mist Walker. Oh, okay. Okay, they're just chomping. So, I think it's better to play Dub's Mist Walker here than Augury Raven. So we can definitely threat like this is just lethal and then if they manage to bounce one of them we can just pump the remaining one yeah they were in the abyss mode hey have a serious question all right let's shoot that is an ominous start to asking a question i will say that one two three four five six seven eight It was the third Behold, I think. I mean, I respect the deck. They just had, like, all Beholds all day. <laughs> but they didn't play any creatures and they just died. It's true, Slubars. ABH doesn't exist to not be always drawing, always Beholding. My opponent took it too seriously, though. Hmm... How do I feel about a guy being with a transgender woman? They should go for it. I think that's great. If that's what they're into and it's all consensual, I love to see it. They would have had to have a hard time against that girl. Yeah, I mean, any aggro deck for sure. Yeah, are both people into it? Cool. As long as consent, as long as people consent to stuff like almost anything flies. Yeah, of course.
X-ray cat 11. Let's go, baby. There's a giant ox. Now we gotta get the plow. As a trans woman, thank God I'm not into do tough task if it's okay to be with me. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, it comes differently to some people. Oh my god, <laughs> Yes, we're a plow deck. We are a plow deck indeed. Um... Yeah, 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 we're just gonna play Giant Ox. I, I know what you mean, Dr. BB Meth, but I do also think some people have been, like, less exposed to the whole notion, so they might have not know how to feel about it or understand it obviously like if you have task then it's you're probably not it's probably not a good fit for you you know yes i like it that's a great flow chart synth that's amazing <laughs> i think that's great yeah exactly people grow in different environments and they're more or less exposed to this sort of thing and might just have no idea how to feel about it and i understand like i think it's better to for somebody to ask like, "Hey, is is this like, is this cool?" Than to just be shut off to the idea of it and just be like, "No, I would never do this." So I think it all is all contextual as well. I think I'm gonna play Starheim Corsair so I don't have to take damage from the Reptero. Yeah, exactly, Doctor BB Math. Exactamente. Dude, Kozima has not been great, Louise. I have I have wanted Kozima to be Behold the Multiverse at almost every point I've drawn her. <laughs> yeah, me too. Molly, I'm sitting there with like the coffee cup, you know, like Kazuma's terrible. Kazuma's worse than Behold the Multiverse. Changed my mind in the books. I don't like that the bird tapped my giant ox. That was not cool. I mean, if I play the augury raven... Well, we're not actually close to making kin seekers get the counter, huh? I think we just play- OH fuck! That was not the plan. I just wanted to play the Augury Raven. Damn. Okay. New plan. We're tell this to. You. No attacks. That was really, really, truly awful. It's crew one. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to play the Raven so that we'd have like a decent block on these guys and take four from the Berg Strider. Now we're instead we're gonna have to take six. I mean, I was down to trade this for this. Oh, that's a problem. Giant Ox can block that pretty well. They've got one, two, two, three Snowlands. What's the process for drafting cards? I suck at draft. Um. Hmm. Hold on. I think here we want to play Giant Ox plus Augury Raven. Uh, I think it just, like, I would use a draft guide if you don't know, Knight. There's a ton that are free, there's a ton that are around, and they kind of help you evaluate cards against each other. I also think it matters, like, looking at the archetype, because there are some archetypes that are better than others in draft, so sometimes, like, you won't follow up a pick if, you, if it's going to put you into an archetype you really don't like, for example. I know CFB has uh, draft picks. I think they might be paid though. I'm not 100% sure. They get two troll activations. Oh, you're right with the Sculptor of Winter. They do. Oh no. <laughs> ah, they're using all the removal spells on my axe and... They still have Rhymewood Falls available, unfortunately. 
So I can't block there, but I could block the Berg. I would lose my Raven. I could double block Kinseekers and take eight. Nah, that's too much. I can't take eight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Blackbird. <laughs> it made me sad. Alright, so what's our deal here? Starheim Corsair can block the Raptor. Giant Ox cannot block at all. I can play a Kinseekers that... Pff, we're just dead. Oh yeah, Limited Resource does definitely have some good YouTube videos that, that will talk about draft picks and like how to draft uh, from week to week. Like they'll, they'll talk about the meta as it advances and stuff. Um, I just seem to be dead. I could make a play here that puts me to one. I guess that's better than nothing. So let me actually do this. I need to behold the multiverse into a land. And then hopefully draw something else that maybe gets me out of this problem. Didn't really do that. We can basically um, chump there, trade there, and take three. Or like... Okay, yeah, so I definitely have to chump here. I think Kuzima goes under the bus. Okay, well, next turn, at least I have the Berg Strider to tap the Ice Hide Troll. Still, still don't have an answer to this Ice Hide Troll, but, like, that's gonna buy me a little bit of time. Just not being able to find synergy passing the card that messed me up. Yeah, I can see that. Something that is kind of interesting too, MTG Knight, that I found when that when like when I was learning the differences between constructed and draft is that in draft it also matters like that you're drafting aggressive cards or defensive cards. With like constructed decks, it just kind of comes already like made for you because the deck has a like a theme or an archetype or something. But in limited, it does matter a lot if you're putting like defensive cards with defensive cards and you know cards that have synergy with each other much more than than I ever felt like that came up in Constructed because in Constructed like everything was already made already. <sighs> yes, Pillar would be a good answer. Um the Ox were kind of an answer, but not really anymore. I wish I would have tapped out. The Iron Verdict isn't really gonna help us here. We need to scry anything that isn't pillar down. We also are in a spot where, like, depending on how they attack. No, they have access to two pumps. Like, we could have blocked, have them pump, then use Iron Verdict, but that's not really gonna help us out too much. This will at least let me have Iron Verdict in case it comes up. Oh, yeah, that that, that could work, Corgi Butts. Block with King Seekers, double pump, and then kill on the second pump. Oh, I guess, yeah, I gotta wait a turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, kin seekers. You will be sacrificed for the cause. Sure. It already has indestructible. Yeah, you're right. That's why you have to wait. And then they're gonna use sculptor for two more. 
Archer, Dobbs. Ooh. That actually kind of worked out that that was a... Uh... That's funny. How much mana do I have? Do I have enough? I... <sighs> okay, well, I have to do this. This is the first play. They didn't have Veil, thank god. So I could actually slow roll and play the Raven and then wait for next turn to respond in Marshall. Um... Because then I'll get a counter on the Raven as well. And they don't have good attacks right now. Yeah, I like the slow roll too. We don't have that many cards, so we have to... Red! Ooh. And they are going to use red right now. Oh, spooky. Holy moly. That's real scary. I have to try to kill them. Yeah, of course, MTG Knight. Wow, I can't even juke them with an Ice Bind Pillar because they can just respond and tap. Oh, they just... They just want to protect Zvella because it's their... It's their only hope. I don't have... Return Artifact or Enchantment card. I don't have... Artifact or enchantments card. Do I have enough? I don't have enough to Master Sculpt and Resplendent Angel, unfortunately, either. Yeah, of course I'm doing it. Right. No worries. Let me get rid of the Kin Seekers. All right. You could get Kazima. Well, we kind of have to start making moves against Vela, is the thing. Does Kazima's boat not count? Oh, I see what you mean. I don't think so, because it only ever sees the front side. And the front side is Kozima, not Omen Kiel. So I don't think you're allowed to. Yeah, I think it only reads the face. So it would put us kind of in an awkward spot. Um, I'm at four against Battlefield Raptor. If they have the deal four card, they could kill me. But I think I am down to trade... Oh no, that's actually too, ma too, ma too many attackers. I can just start hitting with Augury Raven. Because they can start activating Svella now. It's going to start getting out of control. Also can search it from the library with search from an artifact. Yeah, yeah, I, I really don't think it works, unfortunately. I wish. It would be better for us. <laughs> they just drew a raven so they didn't even need to use Vela. The plow. Oh my god. This is can't crew vehicles. Ah <laughs> Brutal. We can still try to make some attacks next turn potentially. We'd have to tap two creatures for it, though. It's so bad. So bad. Ox too tired, can't move plow. Yeah, well, I think we can start hitting with... Resplendent Marshall. An Augury Raven, maybe? Then if they attack back, I can block Starheim and Corsair there. I died to a removal spell, though. That sounds, like, kind of bad. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna hit with Resplendent Marshall. They don't have a good block on it. Yeah, Luis, Luis has won many Grand Prix. Uh, I think my best record is like X3 that didn't top 8. And some GP in so long ago, you know, back when GPs like still existed. Feels like a different life at this point.
Yeah, get the counter on the Raven, baby. Love it. <gasps> Avison! Hey, Avison. it's really good to see you, dude. How are you? Welcome back with a 45 months. That is a hell of a lot of months. I think I want to slow roll Master Scald. Okay. Your best miss cut. Cut to day two on Breakers. <laughs> oh my god, six foot. Yeah, it wasn't another reality nether. It was so long ago. Too long ago to remember. I had a bunch of X4 finishes. But that just, like, doesn't really do anything. <laughs> yes, back when they were actual GPs and not whatever they are now. You went undefeated on day two once in side events. Love it! <laughs> What are their options? I hope nothing that kills my augury, Raven. They seem to have options. They're tanking. Whenever a creature or planeswalker in opponent's country is dealt excess damage. Yeah. That card is good. I might have to play Master Scald. Well, I want to send Colossal Plow in there. Oh, that's cute, six foot. Why did they untap land? What's the point of that? Been to Chicago lately? No, it's been years, man. It's been a years. All right, so who are we tapping to send this plow in? Because I really want to. It's also going to gain us life. Oh, no, Tarzog! Because it's three life, and then we, we get to keep the mana. Replay the plow. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to Chicago back once after I moved out, because I still had some stuff to take care of there that I... Like, with my condo, and I haven't really been back since. We were actually planning on coming back with Louise. We had, pl like, we're talking about a trip to go visit some of my friends back there. And then coronavirus happened! <laughs> so, you know. Chat, do we actually have a tax with a Colossal Plow? kind of feel like we don't. We could tap Augury... Yeah, we were going to go to Cafe Babariba. We could tap Augury, Raven, and Stalheim Courser and then keep the Berg back. But that just feels like... Puts me at 7. And they probably don't even block it. And then that'd just be bad for me. Yeah, Kayo, I don't like it. I think instead... I'm just gonna... You know, I didn't- I never liked Portillo's that much, Drew. I lived, like, right next to the one downtown. I'm just gonna be sending with Augury Raven in the skies. I think this is our best chance. I'm just gonna play Master Scald. No, Fader! Oh my god, Fader, we had, um... We had figured out all of the housing for Gen Con. We had a group of, like eight people we were gonna all fly to it for like my friends from chicago my friends here from denver like some of my magic friends were all gonna get together and go and we managed to get housing for everybody we managed to get two hotel rooms next to each other and if you've ever gone to gen con you know how much of a nightmare it is to do the thing are they gonna fight my augury raven cito Yeah, Molly, we, like, figured it out. We we got two hotel rooms next to each other. It was a whole thing. Eric, thank you so much for the 44 months. Um, I think if that's their attack, I want to crew with Plow and Courser.
Yeah, it's annoying. They're going to draw a card. But I think I'd rather trade Plow than my other creatures here. If something were to happen. They also traded with not my Raven. And my Raven is really the thing that's kind of threatening them at the moment, so... One of the people I go to Gen Con with is VIG. They get access to room like six weeks before the lottery. That's incredible, Darzug. We had to get access, normal access to the rooms like plebes. But we managed to get two rooms for eight people. Can you believe that? And then it just... <laughs> Probably have skewed the perspective on Portillo's because I had all the time where I lived in the burbs and I wasn't able to get it anymore when I went to college. Yeah, Drew, so... <laughs> The thing that I had a tough time with Portillo's is in that area of Chicago and River North are all like the best restaurants in the city, basically. And there's some really, truly amazing restaurants. And then Portillo's is kind of just okay. But I know a bunch of like Chicagoans are going to kill me. Chicagoans love Portillo's. So they're always like, oh, my God, Portillo's is the best thing since sliced bread. Ah, you know, like the venue is really cool. I just don't think the food's that good. No, Ark! <laughs> also, I was so excited for us too. So for those who haven't been here at GP Vegas, we, we have done uh, like snake meetup every year. And every year it's gotten even cooler. And the, the one we did last year was so cool. We like rented a venue. We had like unlimited apps. Um, it was just super awesome. And then this year I wanted to do the same thing and actually just like put it on an event at like on Eventbrite so people could just like Buy. So that way we could actually figure out how many entries we needed. That, that was something that we found like logistically challenging the first time around. And so it was so exciting because we were going to put that together for GP Vegas. I was so hyped to do the big snake meetup because that's like the meetup, right? And then, yeah. Yo, Squirrel Loot. We are talking about some bullshit, obviously. Never any different around here. Squirrel 66. I really appreciate that. Shadow Wolf, welcome also. How are you? I hope you had a really good weekend. Ow. Oh yeah, if, if the Battle for the Raptor were too to we would have been dead like 20 turns ago. <gasps> Holy shit. Oh shit. Mm. Okay, so... Which one's the one that's going to the top? Wait, aren't we just dead? No, we're not. Okay. Um, Master Scott's going to hand, and yeah, we want Miss Walker. So we do want to take action. Yes, we're going to go to one, assuming they don't have anything else. But we do get to eat the Agar. And the Kin Seeker. So their attack isn't even really that good. Yeah, look, their attack's no bueno. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting. Like, our blocks don't even really require us to trade off the plow because if they attack with all, we just put Berg in front of Agar. Yeah, look, they didn't even have attacks here. Yeah, it wasn't even good. We got punished for not playing um, the Glacial Flood Plane. Because I can't play my Mistwalker this turn. Rather just play the 4-4 four four and not attack. I guess if I attack... No, I should not attack here. I think you crew plow this turn with Brig and Miss Walker, and then you can play Skull.am. Well, Luis, but I'm at three. I just don't think I can make that many blocks. Oh, no, you're right. We actually did need... Oh, that's my bad. We actually needed to do that because I needed to force some blocks because I'm at three. I mean... Yeah, I also get the mana. Yeah, they would have had to chump the plow. Well... 
What happens if I... I, I can't activate the plow anymore because I'm in combat. Yeah, I, I, I actually killed myself by doing this. I needed to have played the Mistwalker and crew with these. Play that, gain three, and then play Mistwalker. That's too bad. Yeah, this was really avoidable, unfortunately. Plus, they know my only card left is Mistwalker. So yeah, they can just chump here. Corey, thank you for the 37. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm dead. That's too bad. Suppose we were live with them activating Svela instead of attacking with her. Yeah, I doubt that they do that. I guess maybe we could have. I don't know. Seems unlikely. Yeah, I just needed to have played the Mistwalker first. That was an intense game. It was a long game, too. Boo -doo -boo -boo -doo -doo -doo. All right, I was adding a thing to my to do list. It was look at Discord notifications. Look at oh, Discord going live notifications. Yeah, I'm hungry, Luis. What what were you thinking? Mmm, we've got the combo. Love it. How do I keep track of my to-dos? I use a website called Todoist. Um I used to I used to use a different one. It was called um because I got rid of the one I really liked. It was called like Listio or something. And uh I just basically, like, it's just uh, a to-do list that makes new items per day. But you can also categorize them by stuff. So, like, you can make a to-do list for, like, things you need to buy for or, like, things you need to do around the house. So, at different points, I'll have different to-do lists. But mostly, it's just, like, all work-related stuff. Um, and then I'll have, like, a separate section that are, like, life-related stuff. So, things like... Um, I need to, like, things I need to buy, or, like, I need to do my taxes, or I need to make a meeting with my tax preparer, you know? And then, mostly for, like, for everything else, I just use... Oh! What is this? What was that? Did they just jump for for oh man x-ray cat the game was sick ggs your deck was cool i actually threw at the end i could have um i i so i put myself dead basically if i played a mist walker and then they crewed the colossal plow with mist walker and berg and attack they gain three and then i get enough mana to play master scald so i can make enough blocks to not die it was super close though Oh my god. Squirrel, I actually have greenies coming. I legitimately have greenies coming. I know you'll be happy to hear. I think I'm fine trading the colossal plot for these two idiots. What about dentistics? I think dentistics I didn't get. I think I got kebabs. Like some sort of pepperoni sticks, uh, greenies, and like the, these alternative peanut butter bones. They're not quite the same ones she has right now. Um, but yeah, and then the other thing I do, Ryan, is I just have a really robust calendar that sends me notifications for stuff. So I just use that to like know where and where I'm supposed to be at different places. Um, I think I want to behold first. Another plow. Yes, I'm very interested in that. Oh, and a master scald. I'm also very interested in that. I don't have a way to get it back yet, but I am still interested in it.
Wait, what? No, I have Molly's birthday on it, squirrel. I totally do. I'll have you know that I have a specific birthday calendar where I put all, like, the birthdays I want to try to remember. <laughs> uh, I don't care about that. We can just send with you. Oh, we are harvesting our opponent. It's lovely. Dude, this plow has been such a combo. Really? But why, though? My opponent just loves jumping the plow. I'm not gonna complain. I don't have anything to... Exile from the yard. So I can do that. Glacial floodplain. Might as well play the marshal. I'm not worried about a wrath. Oh, it's always squirrel stirring up trouble. When is it not squirrel stirring up some bullshit? Yeah, ship it, Darzog. I'm in. Show me, show me. Let's see it. Holy shit, it has a gold span dragon. Double demon bolt. Doomscar Titan. This looks like a really good deck. Double priest. How much snow you got? You have a good amount of snow. This deck is really good. Oh, you've got Arnie too. Yeah, that 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 deck looks awesome. Hey, victory! Love it. Yeah, Goldspan Dragon especially. That card is unbeatable. People play that in draft, and you're like, okay, cool. Well, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. Why are we doing four two? All right, we 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 got this. Let me. I need to go use the restroom real quick. Let me put on my burb screen. All right, I will be right back, chat. Demon was pack one, pick one, and I got... Oh, wait, you had the demon too? I didn't see that in the screenshot. Dang, that's pretty good. All right, let me run a 60-second ad break. I'll be back. Ooh, woo. Beep, 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 beep. All right, let's go. Oh, snap. Well, we get to seven wins. There's going to be some doubters out there because we already have two losses. Oh! <gasps> Wow, look at that. All right, believers get in on that bet. It's good odds. It's excellent odds. That is some fantastic odds for the believers. And you know I'm going to try my best to deliver. You get a 7-2 run with a 5-color snow deck with both losses versus Goldspan Dragon. <gasps> you put 10k on dubs? Oh, believers going stonks. <laughs> Seven wins is a new GME. We're going to the moon, baby. Mm. Look at Julita. Say hi. Hi, Peppy. Well, this hand looks pretty good. It's looking good for the believers so far. Love it, love it. <laughs> Snow covered plane and two ox. Maybe behold, actually, depending on what they do. They foretold something. Hmm. What would I rather have down? Nox or a Behold? I can probably... Oh my god! <gasps> Somebody went all in on the doubters! Holy moly! The believers are getting farmed! I'm gonna Behold. Yeah, especially since they didn't do anything. Yo, this prediction got spicy. The believers are gonna get farmed, dude. They're getting farmed. Oh shit, that's bad for me. That's bad for me. Yeah, I think I want my star hand courser. Robin had taken over the chat. <laughs> All those retail retail betters are, are really skewing the odds out there. Uh, this is an elf. Get out. It is an elf, apparently. Okay, let me behold. Hmm. Now we have a bunch of lands. Behold them to play giant ox, I guess. Yeah, not looking, not looking great. That Elvish War Master is a problem. 
What's our current record? Uh, we are 4-2. Let me get rid of this Julie cam. They attacked with an elf warrior? That is such a weird attack. I guess it could be snakeskin veil or the plus four plus four. It could be Jarl maybe. Yeah, I think it's actually more likely to be Jarl, and I kind of just want to block there. Also, because they played the Berserker, so they want to put counters on it. Oh! That worked out so good, because now I have a Mistwalker in the yard for my Resplendent Angel. Now I just gotta get some more creatures out. Yeah, that that was Jarl. That's what they have to have. That, that's the only thing that would make sense, really. Alright, so let me go Mistwalker... Into Hotel Raven. Yeah, they have to have Jarl. Sure, that's also a elf. I guess if I force them, look, if I put the giant ox and if I put the mistwalk in front of the berserker, they might be prompted to use the jarl and they won't get the like the buff because otherwise it's just going to die. So they need to put the counters on it for it not to die. So maybe it makes sense for us to block that there and this on here, because if it is jarl and it seems like it is, they kind of want to use it before combat. Otherwise, they're going to lose their berserker. Yeah, look, that worked out. That worked out pretty well. Now we get to... Yeah, it was good. It worked out. I, we're still super far behind, but at least like this puts us in a better position. That's for sure. Um, We definitely want to kill one of these idiots. It's either the Elvish Warmaster or the Berserker. And then... Probably Augury Raven and then set up for a Splendid Martial next turn. I gotta kill a 2 2 War Master, dude. Yeah, I probably do. Alright, so let me do this. I'm gonna go Iron Verdict. Just do it now. Kill the War Master. Play the Raven. Play Shimmer Drift Veil. Name White? No, we already have another White Source here. We, we, we use more blue in this deck anyway. And I have enough for Master Scald Resplendent Angel on the same turn. Yeah. But plus we have the Mistwalker activations. Alright, so they still have a million things, but they're not making more 1-1s. One These guys are holding down the fort. Then next turn... I can play Resplendent Marshall, put plus one, plus one counter everywhere. Also, this being a 1-7 is actually like a big game. Because they have some free attacks right now with those guys, but they won't when we have a 1-7 Ox. <laughs> Gabby, if you win me some channel points, I'll buy dinner with a joint card. <laughs> Deal, Luis. <laughs> No, not my raven. Oh my god. Not like this. I'm gonna lose. This is menace, right? Technically, it's better to block like that. Ah. Another ox. Um, one, two, three. Okay, so because we drew this planes, I think we should actually play Master Scald and Giant Ox, then Resplendent Marshal. Try to get the most value. Now the two Giant Oxes theoretically might be able to block the Blood Sky Berserker. We might have to take another five, though. God, that's right, they got that back.
they didn't have to play is interesting. Okay, well this Resplendent Angel is gonna be for max value. Alright, we did it. Uh, okay, well we still don't have attacks. I don't have another changeling in there. I might want to get another changeling in there for if Resplendent Marshal dies. Herald King of Skemfar, trigger that thing, make another 1-1, one, one. draw another thing that- I don't have any cards in hand! Taste it! Problem is my opponent's going super wide and I can't- This card's really good if you put it in the right deck. I don't know what we're gonna do to get out of this. Yep, this is this is the best dra elf draft deck I've ever seen too, Darzog. By by a good amount. I mean that does a decent draw. Is there a chance we could start hitting with the Augury Raven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this thing has menace. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers. Going down to six. Doesn't sound super good. Yeah, it's all good, MTG Knight. I don't think we have attacks here, sadly. We might if we make some blocks with a resplendent marshal. Maybe, I don't know. Our master needs seven mana to use pump and death touch. Ah, uh, yes, seven. We we can't beat that. We already can't beat this board as is. Oh, jeez. No way, that's an elf too. Get out! It's an elf. Oh my god! This entire time I thought this was a bear. It's a the elf on top of the bear. <laughs> the more you know. Oh, hello. Yeah, we're Omega Dobbs. I know, exactly, Mr. Horrible. Yeah, I don't really know the card names, Feline. So... I am way more likely to believe that it's a it's a bear just because it's like you know the art of this is just a giant bear. Yeah. All right, maybe Inga can deliver us from evil. Nope, that is God. I mean, that's a good enough card. We should keep it on top. They can already activate. It. You know what it reminds me of. There was a card in, like, I can't remember what set it was. It might have been Dominaria. And it was a 3-2 flyer that when it died or when it ETB'd, it milled three cards. And it, and, and it was, like, on a pterodactyl. And so for the longest time, I just swore that this thing was, um... Maybe they forgot about the activated ability. I, Yeah, it's the Accolade. It's, like, Wind Rider Accolade or something. No, they didn't forget, yo. They d really didn't forget. We're f su we're Omega dead. And I didn't realize that the card was actually meant to be a cat until like it got cast and it made a meow sound. And I'm like, what do you mean? What was it called? Wind Grace Acolyte. Thank you. Look, Wind Grace Acolyte. It's kind of like that. Like my entire the entire time I played with this card, I just thought it was a pterodactyl. Here, look. See, when Grace Acolyte. Every time I saw this card, I'm like, yeah, of course, it's a five mana three two flyer. The Acolyte is actually this like cat rider on the back of the the pterodactyl's back. Acolytes of the Lost Wind Grace fight to keep Burborg relics out of Cabal hands. And it's only because when you cast the card, it goes meow. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Amazing. I know, it's a cat. It's a cat. The thing is a cat. 
Yo, DC! That's cool. What did you have for dinner? Do you have some fish? I went 4 3 with this deck. It was not bad. Not the best deck, not the worst deck. Sorry, believers! The person who came in all for the haters for like 100k really, really farmed all the believers. <laughs> I like that there's been at least three new revelations because you just mentioned it like that, Gabby. Yeah, there's a few. We've talked about it here on the stream. Oh, that's funny, Feline. I can see that one. Yeah, there's a couple of cards that are like that for me. I, I think I did a thread one time. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Because the card that I used to think of when I thought of that was... A Signal Pest. Let me see if I can find it. Maybe it wasn't a Twitter thread. Oh, yes. Sorry, it was a great Twitter thread. Okay, because people responded to it. Look, so this one, every time I saw Signal Pest, I saw the left claw with my head and I thought it had a beak and it was roaring. But like, look, it's this is supposed to be a face. You see that? This is like the face and it looks like, like one of the alien monsters. But I always thought this was the head. Like this was the beak and this was the eye. You know what I mean? And so then people started responding to this in the thread. And this one, Mo this one by Molly is so good. Like, I see this, and doesn't it look like these are the arms and they're like really thin arms that are flailing? If you actually look really closely at the card, this person's going like this. Like, you can actually see his hands on his ears. Like, this is the bicep, this is the elbow, and then he's covering his ears like this. And it's not just like flailing arms, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, this one's pretty good too. Like, you think these are the eyes and this is a beak? Kind of like, um, like when you see an orca whale, you know how like they have those white spots that look like they're the eyes? But in reality, this is the face. It's just like a cat. It's a sphinx, right? Like, this is the eye. This is the nose. It's just this part. Yeah, like an owl. Exactly. Like, this is the beak. Look at that, like, these are the eyes, and, like, this is a giant beak. The Sphinx never got you. I've definitely fallen for the Sphinx. There were some other really good ones here. This card isn't a picture of a butt. <laughs> that does look like a thong. I never thought of that, because I, I guess I always knew it was a fist. Um, for years, I thought Phyrexians had transformed Glissa into a half-snake that could scaly gold throne was her tail. Turns out she's simply leaning against it wearing a bikini. Wait, so how are you supposed to see it? Into a half snake that only that had that the scaly gold throne was her tail. Oh, I see. She's just like leaning against it. It's just, yeah, it's not part of her at all. I see. I see. Like she has a leg here. You can kind of see. I don't think I've ever seen that one, but I can see what it was. Divinity of pride isn't a giant bird with its head leaned back. It's a giant angel holding a sword in the front. Okay, I see what synth means. So like the angel is, this is the angel and this is like a scythe scimitar thing plus wings. But if you saw a bird, like this is the beak. This is, it looks like a chocobo. Right? Like this is the beak. And this is, the dress is definitely gold. Hey Ray, it's good to see you. Yeah, this thread was really good. Blood artist is looking at you, not the canvas. Oh, that it is. That's pretty cool. This is a mouth. Oh my god, this is Tarmogoyf, I bet. Yes, I for years never real never understood how to look at Tarmogoyf. Yeah, so I thought I when I saw Tarmogoyf, I always thought this was like beak, 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 like ears, eyes. And I did not really know what the what this part was. Aw, so sweet, Ray. I'm happy to hear that. I already saw this one. It actually is not subliminal message it's sending that you can't unsee. <laughs> sure, I thought that too. Reality Smasher is not a mass of tentacles burrowing out of the ground towards the night. It's a it is a center running to the left. Yes, I, I have always seen this one before. Yes, also true, Mr. Horrible. Totally agree. It is two people, one with a white mask and one grabbing the left one head bashing him. 
Oh, I actually did not even know what was going on in the art of this. This is like Inquisition of Kozilek, I think. Yeah, there's some good stuff in here for sure. Oh, have you guys seen this one? If you look really close, that Torch Fiend. It's actually like a devil. Like, this is the eye. It's got some teeth. Little, like, chin hairs. It's funny. <laughs> Your mind blew when it was pointed out at you. Inquisition of Coast, like, okay, I'm gonna headbutt you to death. <laughs> You're telling fellow moosers how I thought that Cthulhu from BG was purple elephant. Saturday Cthulhu's? I guess I could see that. Most of these are low resolution of card art. Yeah, people just, like, probably did a Google search and copied it in there, Megram, because it was just a Twitter thread that I made, like, four years ago or something. Olivia Art is a big meme, yeah. All right, let me wrap up this draft, and then we'll draft again. If you're watching this on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed another Kaldheim draft. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would super appreciate it if you did. It lets you know when other videos come out, and it's a way to support the stream and channel. Also, if you're shopping on channelfirewall.com and use the code Gabby, that also directly supports the stream. Thank you to CFB and Ultimate Guard for supporting or for sponsoring today's video, and I will see you all later. If you like this video, you can subscribe for more. And if you want to come say hi to us on the live stream, that's on twitch.tv slash I stream every weekday in the afternoons, mountain times. See you later.